Well, hello everybody, how are you today? Thanks so much for joining me here on another Essential Stencil Live. Can't wait to show you some Christmas things today. I'm gonna to do a Christmas sign. And, um, and you might have seen this stencil lately. It's one of my favorites and I haven't used it yet. So I'm gonna use it today. Um, I'm using two different stencil sets today. One is, let me show you, it's the Sleigh Rides, Vintage Sleigh Rides stencil set. And the other one will be the All Is Calm stencil set. And I'll show you those stencils in just a minute. But while you're jumping on, I'm just gonna find you here on my site. Hi, Debbie, I can see a couple of you popping on there now. How are you today? If you're joining the live and you're watching the replay, don't forget to comment the word replay in the comments and you will be able to um, go into the draw for another prize because we do give three prizes out live but then there's a second chance opportunity after the live's over watch the replay comment the word replay and they'll be counting all of those replay comments from 24 hours after the live has finished and you will they'll be picking them now hi abby abby's here dawn's here cindy's here so glad to see your comments flying in and um if you've just joined me we're going to be doing some christmas crafts today i've got the christmas tree up does everyone else have their Christmas tree? It's December 1st there, right? It's the second here today. I'm just checking my dates again. I'm in Australia. If you're new to Essential Stencils, I'm one of the ambassadors here um, with Essential Stencil and we go, each ambassador goes live five days a week here on the Essential Stencil page. And you can find out all the live times right there, right here on the Essential Stencil page in their event section. You'll be able to see that and they'll notify you if um if you've clicked going to the to the lives so um who have we got here hi tony hi michelle if you're here for the very first time too let us know that there's a lot of fun stencilers here as we watch uh every week i don't know if you noticed i've got new glasses guys new glasses i've graduated i've do you call it graduated i have graduated to transition lenses. So um, I usually use, use just reading glasses and I only need them for reading because my distance is fine, but I got sick of taking them on, off, on, off. So I'm still getting used to that, you know, where am I kind of thing. So hi, Sherry, hi, Sandy, awesome to see you. All right, so let's get started on our stenciling today. The first one I'm going to do sort of different stages. I just found this board as is at our one of our local craft stores here in Australia. But you can find one similar at your craft stores that you have in the USA. Uh, it has a couple of hooks at the back to hook the sign up, but it's joined four boards together with these um, stays right there. And it probably would be quite an easy kind of a sign to make. I've done some before with three boards together and they've just gapped them a little bit apart. So you could make something like this for yourself if you had some recycled timber. I love making things out of recycled timber. But yeah, this one was just from a um, one of our local craft stores that had a sale going on blank signboards. So catch those sales while you can. Speaking of, uh, you can get anything in Essential Stencil store today using my code iRestoreStuff. You can get 10% uh, off anything that we are uh, uh, showing you today. Yep. So, um, and then I will be using this crate to show you how to make a Christmas tree crate. So that'll be fun. That one I got at IKEA. But I do have my Amazon link if anyone was interested that has a various things. I've made a whole list of things that you could stencil on. I've got a whole stenciling tools and stenciling ideas lists on uh, my Amazon link store. So I can pop that in the comments for you later. Let me know. Welcome to anybody who's new. Let us know in the comments. We are giving out prizes at the end of our live, so stay tuned. Now I will move my little box over here and get my sign in place. So there are two stencils in this set. We've got the vintage sleigh rides um, stencil right here. And guys, I just want to show you, or well, I'm going to just, I always love to give you my tips. Oop, my cable is under the chair, excuse me a second. On using essential stencil stencils in so many different ways, you can mix and match all of your frames and so on. So imagine this complete frame around here being used for something else. You could even tape off the little sleigh right here 
and put something else, a Christmas tree right here and maybe your family name right here using one of the lettering sets. So if you look up Essential Stencil website, essentialstencil.com, and you go to the search bar, you type in letters, it'll bring up all of the different letters that you can combine and make your own words. So you don't have to use the existing words on the signs, you can create other words for it. Um, you might want to use warm cocoa and cozy blankets on something else. For example, this crate that I've got here today, just a simple crate, but imagine that at the bottom of this box and popping some warm blankets in a crate that sits beside your couch so the winter time you can be cozy while you're sitting watching whatever you're watching. Um, okay, let's see. So there's that. So there's that one and also this is the one I'm going to be using today and I know someone else has used this recently, one of the other ambassadors, and I just love it. And I love the idea that you could just put it on your front door around Christmas time and just pretend that you're St. Nick's bed and breakfast. Established 1807, complimentary milk and cookies. So I think that's so cute. And again, look at the little uh, icons around it. So we've got gingerbread here, little baubles here. You could even use these flourishes for another sign, for some other sign ideas. So even the words down the bottom, you could add that to some other sign. You could use the words bed and breakfast, tape off with your good old painter's tape, tape off other sections of the sign and use that bed and breakfast for, maybe you've got your family name up here, bed and breakfast established. And you could use one of the number sets uh, that come with a number of the different stencil um, uh, numbers and letters stencil sets. You could use, make the year of your, you bought your home or the year of your marriage or whatever you feel like down there established uh, for a family name sign. I think it'd be a fun idea. So we're going to start with that today and I'll move on to the crate in a, in a little bit. So moving the camera down so we can see and get a good look at our sign today. So there's our sign. I'm just sort of centering it, but sometimes with these boards that have those gaps in across here, you've got, when I center this, if I get my measuring tape, I'll have a look here. If we have a look here, we've got, let's see, we're about one and a half inches from the edge that side. Oh, I should go to the letters, okay? So just in case. That's uh, two and there and two and there. So if, if that's in the center, we've got our board line or the gap running along the very bottom of those letters so that they won't stand out. So if you wanted to, you could slide that. I'm going to slide it right now, see if you can tell. Slide that slightly down so you can see at least the base of those letters. And it doesn't matter so much because it looks antique, it looks rustic when you've got some of those gaps in there with the signs. So don't worry too much like the gingerbread man is across a gap here. Um, or you could go the other way and move it up so that you can see all of St. Nick on that one board there and it separates those and you just have a little gap here. You might have a bit of a gap along here. So it just depends on what your eye feels like that it should look for you. So let's um, move this down here. I'm gonna use white on this. So I'm just using an ordinary mineral paint. Hi, Tina. Thank you for welcoming everybody. That's amazing. And thank you for sharing, Deborah. Deborah says sprinkled, which means she's hit that share button and shared it with some friends or you can tag someone, send it on message via message to someone you know who's a crafter, who loves stenciling and who might want to win some stencils. Yeah, sprinkled just means shared. It was, um, I don't know if Facebook still does that, but they sometimes don't like it when you use certain words and they'll, I don't know, it was one of those things. So we kind of had code, code word for that. All right, so I've dripped a little bit of white paint here. I've got one of Essential Stencils stencil brushes. It's the three quarter inch one. These come in a set of four. And you can use my code I Restore Stuff and order that in your cart as well. I'm just going to use that little drip that dripped out of my box. Hi Nancy from Minnesota. Thank you Cindy so much. I'm going to add a little bit more. See I've got all that paint but you don't want all of that paint on the end of your brush. See how it's all blobbed there? So what I'm going to do is uh, gently without flicking it everywhere wipe, off, wipe it off on the edge and then I'm offloading on my piece of cardboard my cardboard moving boxes again. Just laid out cardboard moving boxes on my table and then I can, it just becomes a craft table then. Okay, so then we've worked in 
the paint to the bristles of the brush and it's fairly dry now. You can see through the bristles, there's no paint glugging up the edge there. Okay, so now we're gonna go onto the board and when I've done all this, um, I'm gonna show you how we can antique it a little bit, make it a little bit looking old and aged. So just starting with our big letters here. I'm just doing a swirling motion. If you're new to stenciling, try all the different methods that some of the ambassadors um, are showing you and see what works best for you. Now, some of us like to use this swirly method. Some of us do the stippling like this. Um, others might use, uh, instead of a brush, might use uh, makeup wedges and makeup sponges. But see what works best for you. I hope you'll ignore my nails. They're starting to come off the nail polish and I did not have time to, to fix them. Um, Jenna says you could put top gingerbread on top of the board, then move the stencil for the middle part of the stencil, move the milk and cookies part to the bottom board. Yes, you could. You could just move that all down to different places. I'm just going to use it as is and count those gaps as just something as if it was a weathered old sign um, that we're painting over. But yes, you could definitely move all the different bits and pieces. So once I've finished here, you could move this complimentary milk and cookies to that bottom board, have this on this part of the board, and so on. So as you can see, I don't think I've dipped my brush in, oh, well, maybe I've done it twice. Let's do that again. So once you see that you start to, your letters are starting to fade with the paint, You'll dip it in again, offload it again. Uh, yeah, who was that? Jean says sometimes she sees the swirls when she does her when she does her stenciling. I have noticed that too, Jean, and it seems like it's on, it depends on the surface that you're working on. So this wood is fairly rough surface. The smoother your surface surface that you're painting on, I find that's when those swirly marks start to show up. This one feels quite rough and matte finish, so it does have some kind of finish on there, I think. Uh, but it's feeling, you know, I can't see the swirl marks in here, which is, which is, which is ideal. So just dipping that in again, and as you go around, Larry Christie says, can't believe it's already December. I know. Now, if you're getting, uh, if you have too much on your brush, you do risk the paint bleeding under the stencil and you get those furry edges, uh, then it's a lot harder to fix that than it is to just put less and less and less and less on your brush. When you think you've got less, offload even more over here until the brush is almost dry, you know. Oh, people are talking about they're getting their Stencil of the Month Club stencils. Yes, mine's on delivery en route here to Australia. Hopefully it'll be here soon so I can maybe demo it next week. Uh, Melissa demoed it. She designed this month's Stencil of the Month Club with the gorgeous barn, which can transform into a church. You can make some lovely sayings on it. If you haven't seen it yet, you can see that at stencilofthemonthclub.com. And to be a member of the Stencil of the Month Club, you just have to sign up to one of their either, I think it's three months, six months, 12 months, there might even be one month subscription. And you can be receiving three large stencils like this in a set every month. And they are really brilliant. They mix and match with each other, coordinate with each other. You can take a look at, even at the Stencil of the Month uh, Club shop that's um, uh, that is, you know, you can see that now on their site and you can see some of the past stencil of the month stencils. I'm thinking I should have shifted it up like someone suggested. I do like the way it sits in this design so I'm not sure how it would work if I separated it too much. It probably would be fine. And as I like to say, you could always practice on a blank piece of cardboard or 
spare piece of paper to get your layout just the way you want it. Someone else got their stencil of the month club today. Yeah, I can't wait to use it. And if you do use my code, I restore stuff at the stencil of the month club, when you sign up for your subscription, use that code and you'll get 50% off your first month. So if you're not in the club yet and you want to join, use that code, I restore stuff. And my code is in the description of our live here and all the links for today's stencils are in there as well. Adding just a little bit at a time as I go here. Sometimes when you first put on, especially white on wood, you'll notice that it soaks into the wood, especially if it's a bit porous like this one seems to be. So we may need a second coat, but as I think I mentioned before, it's better to do two coats rather than have too much on your brush and risk it kind of going all underneath the stencil and making bleeding edges. Okay. So gingerbread man just trying to come a bit more bright. Christine just got this stencil. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, I was going to move it down, but I think I'll just keep going with our bed and breakfast sign. Still got, so I'm doing swirly method. Sometimes you can pounce, sometimes I pounce and swirl. <laughs> so a little bit of both. I like to press it so it's in there and not um, swirling to get the paint underneath the edges. But keep practicing and have a go at what best suits you and what method you like to use by just doing it on a piece of cardboard first, even one or two letters until you get it right so that there's no bleeding underneath. Yeah, there's some people saying they usually swirl, some people like to stipple, pounce. I've got too much on my brush. I can see it already when I started to do that. So I'm just going to pounce a little bit to get that moving around. I don't want to bleed it underneath. If you're swirling and you have too much on your brush, you'll definitely get it on underneath. Okay, I think I'm good now. <laughs> scares me a little sometimes. I think, whoa, I had too much on my brush there. Never mind. It's just paint. We can sand it off and start again if we need to. Okay, I'm holding down my stencil with my hand, but you can use handy painter's tape. <laughs> that would have been good. Um, yeah, you can check out here on the Essential Stencil page, Melissa's Live from when she showed her Stencil of the Month Club set, and you'll probably see us ambassadors starting to use that again now too. Really a lovely, very clever design. Okay. Little gingerbreads. And then when I'm finished this, I'll let it dry while I work on our crate that I got over there. And oh, gingerbread men, really speckledy. Sometimes when you're pouncing, it's a little bit speckledy. So then I just wriggle it around a bit. And that's where your swirling can get a bit more coverage on those letters. So our words at the bottom are going to go over that gap, but I'm not worried about that. But as someone very smartly suggested earlier, you could shift the stencil and then continue your words down so that it's all on this board. Nearly there. And sometimes you don't even have to have that really good solid coverage either. You can just do a little bit of a swirl and make it look rustic and half and sort of worn it makes it look a bit worn that's how i'd describe it complimentary milk and cookies at saint nick's bed and breakfast all right so yeah the other thing with the stencil of the month club is you get access to their um club members Facebook group and you'll find lots of really good inspirational uses of a lot of not just the club stencils but also these stencil stencils um, and so on so I'm just going to take that off now so you can see and it doesn't look too bad that the line has you know that it has breaks in those areas there's our rustic look of that but then to make that dull down a little I can add a little bit of um, a wax or a 
uh, finish or something like that. So for now I'm going to let that dry and then I'll work on the antiquing of that look in a minute. But I do like, I'll show you that close up, I do like how you can still see the wood grain through sometimes when you're stenciling and there's a nice wood grain that's quite heavy. It lends well to that. So that is the, that stencil set is called Vintage Sleigh Rides. And I'm going to pop that down to be washed as soon as I'm finished with the live. Now the other thing I wanted to work on was a tree crate. Now this you can pop a Christmas tree in. So when we're finished here today, I'll be popping my Christmas tree in it. So the set is called, oh, look, here we've got a helper. <laughs> we have the elf helper here with us today, hanging out here. Okay, so the, it, this is the O Come, all is calm. Here's the stencil set. O Come All Ye Faithful is on there. I'm going to open it up actually and show you what we've got here. Let's see. I'm trying to catch your uh, comments at the same time. Vintage Sleigh Ride is, yeah, that's the other one that I was using. So this one is, oops, it's torn, torn the plastic. How do you store your stencils? Those of you who are starting to get lots of them, how do you store them? I love seeing some of the people's great ideas for storing their stencils. I uh, created a toolbox, I painted a toolbox um, for my stencils recently and that fits some of them. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look. Pop this up. Okay, the first stencil we've got is the O Come All You Faithful. Oop. And then we have All Is Calm, All Is Bright. And again, this is a set of three, but you can also mix and match some of your stencils with each other. So this one I've seen uh, as in the example, I think that they've got on here, a set of three, which is lovely with the wood frames. Oh, Christmas tree. So the one I, one I want to do is this Oh, Christmas tree on the front of the crate. But yeah, you can imagine all the things you could use this for. You could do your Christmas trees down the bottom and you could even put you know, if you had a larger, longer sign, you could put all is calm, all is bright at the top of that with some Christmas trees underneath. O come all ye faithful. Some of these ones would also work great with, um, I think it was the set that I used last week. Had It was a porch leaner and had a big giant star there that would look great on all is calm, all is bright. So let's get organized here with my O oh Christmas tree stencil from this set. And the link is right there in the description of the live for the ones that I'm using today. Yes, all of the ones from the winter collection are very cool. And so Mr. Elf is going to have to go somewhere else. It's not usually very helpful. And I'll point you down so we can have to stand up for this one so I can use my crate. So I just got this from Ikea, our local Ikea shop, but you'll see some similar on my Amazon link if you wanted to, um, uh, if you wanted to see that. I'll just pop that Amazon link in there so you can see that. I've got lots of crate ideas that you can find there. But this one, if you do have a Ikea close, I don't know, here in Australia, they have these red, already stained ones that is gorgeous gray color and I really like it. But you could stain your own crate, whatever color you like. I just think this Christmas trees would look beautiful white across the bottom here. So when I put, and this is where I just kind of make it up as I go. Uh, the Christmas tree, I want that peak to show on the box. And right now, if I move the stencil to the bottom line of the stencil, it's not showing. It's actually coming off the top of the box. So I would rather lose some of this ground down here um, to the bottom of the box. I will shift that down and so that my the peak of the Christmas tree comes out up the top. So I'm going to lose a little bit of that and I will tape this one down. Holding it with my arm. Brenda, you must have an Ikea near you. She said she's going to go get one. Yeah, but like I said, I'd say that's sort of a driftwood stain color if you do have any stains that are similar to that driftwood or gray color. This is just an ordinary pine box. So when I lay it down like this, I can see that the stencil, when it hangs off the edge here, it creates the trees to buckle up a bit. So I'm going to have to watch that and hold it down. I could put another box beside here and hold that up so that this stencil sits flat, 
I don't have anything on hand right now, so I won't be able to do that. So what we're going to do first is create our lovely background with the trees. You could paint these green, but I just like the idea of snow filled Christmas trees. So can you still see where I'm offloading on here? Um, just on the cardboard. And then I'll go back to what I was going to do on the crate. Okay, so this has a large area. So big tip, I'm going to use a lot of, and I'm not going to offload too much, I'm going to use a lot of this paint in the center there. And see how I'm stippling that? It actually adds a little bit to that effect of snow. So when working from the edges, I'll see if I can tip it slightly. When working from the edges, you can make sure that you're not going to get that paint underneath accidentally. And just be careful of these in between bits of the tree because they're very, um, a little bit thin. So you just wanna be careful not to shove them aside or your brush will get the paint underneath the tree. So still got lots of paint on my brush. I've done a whole tree over here. It sort of looks a bit more like snow when you stipple it, but I want to get a bit more coverage than just snow. Okay, moving along the bottom. Offloading the paint. So don't forget guys, if you want any of the stencils we've got on the the links are at the top of the description of the live or essential stencil might pin them to the to there. You can make sure you use my code irestorestuff anytime for 10% off any of the stencils, any of your order. A little bit more on my brush to cover this and I go from the center and then I start to work my way around. Bit of pouncing, bit of swirling. You can see this bouncing up and down the stencil because of that bend over here on the edge that I was talking about. Okay. There we go. So I'm sort of pouncing now and swishing it around. But yeah, the bits to watch out for are those very thin bits in between the trees. So just kind of stomp it down and then wriggle it. I find if you stomp your bristles down on the box and then just give it a good wriggle on those fragile bits there. So when you're washing these stencils, of course, you'll have to be really careful there too. Sometimes when there's really fragile parts to the stencil, I tend not to wash it. I just leave it. All right, let's see how that turned out. Oh, I've got one star here. I think I might add that. The other stars are off the box, so they can't be added, but you can still add them by just moving the crate down. So there we go. We've got some Christmas trees here on the crate. And then I might just add a couple of, a couple more stars. You can add to the box. <laughs> it's a bit tricky trying to do it like that. Here's a tiny one. Let's do that. I'll bring you up closer in just a minute. Let's see. Maybe another one here. Twinkling. Okay, so there you go. There's the trees. You can see that where some of the wood uh, is a little bit more raw and rustic and where I've you know, gone over it a little bit more there. So that's the edge of our box. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to add the O Christmas tree on to the end of that. So while that's drying, Let's have a look at this sign that we've just done here with St. Nick's Bed and Breakfast. If you've just joined us, we just created this one. And I was thinking of just adding a bit of wax. Now I could sand that back a bit, but it's still, I can see through to the wood in some of those areas. I don't know if you can see that. But just to create a little bit more of a antique look, you could add a few different things, a glaze, or some wax or any of those sorts of things. So to create, I'm just using an antiquing wax, which is a bit of a brown color, or you can use a black wax. And to create that, um, 
the aged look. Or you could use um, a stain, like I've seen Amanda use a stain to just create that glazed effect on top. So I'm just going to grab a bit of that darker wax and lay it over the top of my, and this also at the same time it seals your sign. So this is just an artisan wax, but you can also, oh someone's asking where I got the board. I actually found it at one of our local craft stores here in Australia, so it won't be available there in the US, but you can find similar things in your stores. They do have blank signs, I know, in a lot of the craft stores over there. There'll probably be people in the comments saying where they can get theirs from, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, before I go on further, I'll just show you where I have done. So see if you can see a difference. So I've just gone over the this part of St. Nick's. Not so... It's just a bit subtle, so it just looks aged in a subtle kind of way. So you add that on. See if I can add it there, and so you can see a bit more. I'll add this right across the top, and I just add it right across the whole board to just get even out that tone. So see, I've done the ST, but I haven't done the NYX. Okay, so it's just a bit brighter white. So just to tone that down a bit and age it, make it look really old, I'm just adding a bit of antiquing wax. So. That might stand out a little bit more when I do this. And when the wax hits those, uh, the grain sometimes has is raised when it's uh, raw. See the knots in the wood? There's some areas of the board, if it's quite rustic, that are raised. And so that's where the paint will, or the wax will catch in there. See really close to that eye there. You'll see that aged wax getting in there. So. So you can use any kind of antiquing wax that is for wood. It doesn't have to be, this brand is an Australian brand, but there's so many different furniture waxes over there that you can use. And I've got some of those links in my Amazon store as well. All right, so there is your aged bed and breakfast sign. That you can pop out the front. I don't know, what would you do? Would you add that to uh, the front of your house, front door, or do you prefer to have a wreath on your front door? Or you could add it to just a sign in the house, above in the kitchen area, um, or in the foyer, in the entryway, something like that. So it's just a really subtle aged look adding a furniture wax to that. So I just thought I'd show you that. Yes, and it is a sealer as well. So wax does seal the wood. So if you went to seal right across that whole thing, you know, you'd get a nice lovely sheen across the whole bit of wood. And I've just used a cloth to apply it. You can use a furniture wax if you wanted to. All right, so to use my stencil again here and add O oh Christmas Tree, um, you could add it to the top here and just go over the trees, which is probably what I might do. Or you might want to add it right down there to the bottom, but I feel like the top could be good. And you can use it in a complementary colour. I'm going to use black so that it stands out against the white trees and it doesn't get lost in the paint there because we're doing it over the top. So see how even though the stencil is this big, you can use it on smaller projects in these kinds of ways. So I hope that's helpful. So using a different brush now and it's words. I'm using the 5 8 inch essential stencil brush. Remember these come in a set of four and you can use my code for any of the essential stencil products that I'm showing you today and more all on their website. All right, I'm offloading my black paint onto my board here. And I think I've offloaded enough. I get scared, I think I've got too much on my brush. All right, so just adding the O oh, Christmas tree. You could even make this a shadow that pops out. Let's do that today, hey? I know you guys love the shadow. And I think I just painted over a star. <laughs> oh well, it's okay. So this black may not turn it may not pop as well as it could on the grey wood. But you could use it as a shadow and then Look how much that paint covered all of the stencil. So you could add it as a shadow in the background. So let's have a look and see how that went. So you could leave it like that, oh Christmas tree, a nice 
subtle, subtle look there for your tree. I could just do that. I think I might. But if you have not seen any of my shadowing techniques, um, I'll let you know. I've done them on, on a lot of videos. In fact, there is probably a shadowing um, video playlist. If you go to Essential Stencils Facebook page, in their whole video section, go to the playlists and they have them all categorised in Christmas crafts, um, Christmas ideas, shadowing techniques, different techniques. So have a look there and what I do with shadowing is I pop the stencil back on, shift it slightly to one way and up a little bit to create a shadow and then I'd go over white again and you can see then that the, the white would stand out against that really nicely. So then all I need to do is grab a Christmas tree. Oops, I'm stepping on stencils here. And this is um, a tree that I have on my table just in a basket, but I'm gonna decorate, I'm gonna use it, put it in the crate to show you how cute it looks with the tree. Pick it up a little bit so we can start to see that there. You could even fill the box with some pine cones. I've got a few here. Um, if you needed the tree to sit up a little higher, you could grab a a book stack and sit it up a little bit. Let's pop some pine, pine cones in there. I've got a really large one. I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah, that's working. I've got a couple of gold pine cones too. So just filling that out with whatever you think might work in there. Fill it with pine cones. Fill it with, oh, I've got cinnamon sticks here too in my basket. That would look great too. Then you can decorate your tree however you like. We are going to give away some prizes any minute now with Essential Stencil. And don't forget that if you're watching the replay, that you can comment the word replay and go in the running for another set of stencils. So let me just see if I can point that up so we can show you what we've been doing today. Um, here is our sign, St. Nick's Bed and Breakfast. And I showed you an antiquing wax over the top of that to just give it a subtle, aged look so we've done that and our christmas tree crate how cute is that with oh christmas tree right there on the box isn't that cute now you could also make this crate and i've done this before you could make it reversible and add a stencil on the back like one of the coffee stencils use it to hold your coffee crates at other times of the year or you could just have another, whatever the next season's coming, you could do a Valentine's crate, I don't know. <laughs> Is that the next thing we've got? We can do an Easter crate, whatever you like. But there's our, our Christmas tree, we've got some pine cones in there. Um, so there's our projects today, guys. And I am just gonna look for some winners to see if I can see you on there. Oh, we got done in record time today. Let's see if I can see We've got winners. Let me know if you see winners today. Danielle says, thank you for all your ideas. Love your projects. That's awesome. Guys, if you want to follow me, I would love you to do that. My page is called I Restore Stuff. And you can find me on Instagram, on YouTube, where I've got lots of video tutorials there on painting furniture and decor and that kind of thing. Upcycling. I love to do it. I find things in our thrift stores and make them over, make them beautiful again. Um, but follow me at I Restore Stuff on any of those social media platforms. Uh, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, of course, and my blog is irestorestuff.com. We are just waiting for our winners to appear on the screen, probably. Um, I might have just... There we go. I see it now. Congratulations, winners. So we've got Pam and Diane and Joanne who have all won a an Essential Stencil Prize today. So they've, got, they've tagged you. And the instructions are right there in that comment on how to get in touch with Essential Stencils with your details and they'll send you out your prizes. So I'm so glad you joined me today and I look forward to bringing you another Essential Stencil Live next week. And I'll see you over on my page sometime. I restore stuff. Don't forget to use my code for your 10% off at Essential Stencil or join the Stencil of the Month Club and get 50% off your very first month. So I'd love to see you there. There's my sister. She likes my new glasses. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.